mark here. I'm just going to kick off my discus series. And then I'm going to sit behind the camera, in front of the camera, so you can view the tank while I while I go through this. So I'm going to do maybe a seven part series. Um, I'm just going to go through quickly what I'm going to cover. So one will be on feeding, another will be on water chemistry, um, and then diseases, maintenance, maintenance tips, behavior, tank mates, and breeding. Even though I wasn't overly successful in breeding, I'll do a video on my experiences with it. And the whole, the whole idea of this series is to give my experiences um, only, so I'm not going to be including any guesswork, it's just what I've learned over the few years I've been keeping discus. So on today, today to kick it all off, I'm going to cover what's unfortunately the important part of the series, which would be diseases, and I'm going to go through my experiences with diseases I've had with discus fish. Um, we all combat diseases in this hobby, I don't think not, I don't think it's possible to avoid them. Like I, I, I do two almost 50 percent water changes a week on the discus tank, and I check the water at least once a week, and it's it's always perfect quality. But I still have had diseases creep up on me, so um, just being able to treat them, knowing what to do to treat them, is, is the way to go. So um, I've come across three diseases over my few years keeping discus. I've had four deaths and I've had three successes where the discus was fished, <laughs> the discus was sick and I've managed to bring them back to full health. Okay so first of all I'm going to cover um, the discus that I had that sadly died. So the first discus that died in my care was a blue diamond it's a beautiful fish. I bought him as a, a juvenile. I don't even know if it was a, a male or female. But um, yeah, I didn't have him very long, and he ended up getting flagellates. Um, and I'm sure if any of you've come come across this disease before, or if you're only hearing about it now, it's quite hard to um, to treat. And I didn't, and especially because I was new to keeping discus, it took me maybe too long to figure out what was wrong with them. So to cover that as the first disease, flagellates. What you notice with the fish, if they have possibly that, like it's not guaranteed that with these particular symptoms, but my particular fish had was he was acting very reserved and hiding the time the tank was planted. He was hiding behind the plants, like well in the back. Sometimes actually looking at the back of the tank. Wasn't eating at all. Wasn't interested in the food. If ever a bit of food kind of went past his face, he might bite it, but spit it straight out. Um, and then one of the, the signs I had that really helped me when I helped me figure out what was wrong with him in terms of when I was when I was I suppose looking up online. Um, was white stringy poo and that and then that that helped me determine what, what he had but I think at that point it was too late so I did go out and get a medication from my local fish shop to try and treat it put him in a hospital tank and attempted to treat him but it was too late and he died after being in the hospital tank about two weeks um, Basically what the disease is, is if, they're, if they get stressed out or for whatever reason they stop eating, they've got these um, parasites in their gut naturally, but then parasites multiply in their gut if they're not eating and they don't have food passing through. Um, and that's what happened with that discus. So that was the first, my first loss. And I dread if I ever any of my discus get that again because it's, it's really hard to um, to treat. The next disease I came I came across was bloat. Um, and that it was a blue snake skin discus that I had that caught that disease. 
and I covered this kind of briefly in a previous video like this particular this was my fault really I, because what happened with this fish was he was new and I was kind of been a bit too eager and trying to get him to feed I guess I was kind of afraid after the fragilettes instant so I was kind of too eager to get him feed I should have just left him a few days to kind of settle in but instead I, I was just hand feeding him and it was beef heart I, I had and I think uh, he was just been overfed basically and he ended up developing bloat which is basically like a form of like constipation in, in discus fish but they can't their systems can't naturally fix it themselves they need um, in, inter intervention through medication or epsom salts and by the time i realized that that, that was what's wrong with him he was very bloated and it was too late for him i did try the the epsom salts to try and cure him but i got no joy there and he died as well so for bloat it's it's not impossible to obviously tell what it is but when, when, I, when that fish got bloat i didn't know really what bloat was and i probably could have identified it earlier because it is quite easy to see them bloated like and um, so it's quite you know it's quite you can see it visually quite easily but i'm not too sure if it's too late at the point when, you, when it's very obvious but maybe someone with a better eye or a bit more experience at the time might have spotted it early enough but for me it was too late so sadly that was another one of my discus fish that died moving on then to a fish i had which was a red malboro but if ever if he was in some of my earlier videos he would be yellow and um, he was they're meant to turn red when they get turned become adults but what happened with this particular fish is he was the runt of the pack you see discus do have a hierarchy and they are quite aggressive towards each other you can even see there in the top right corner there's two discus kind of freaked out looking but that's just because they've been battling with my big red there in front of the tank and um, and the big male beside her they're actually a pair now but they dominate the tank so every now and again they push the the ones down lower down the the, the, the um, pecking order they put them up against their paces and they basically just harass them like so so that's what's happened there you can see the example of what happens in the top right corner but luckily the two dominant fish in the tank aren't too aggressive like they, they do show who's boss every so often but they don't they don't take it too far but i have had fish take it too far in the past and um, it was actually my male that big guy there in the middle he he used to be very very aggressive but he's, he's quite big and he's a bit older now he seems to be mellowing out a bit but it was, it was him in particular that was giving my uh my red marble an absolutely horrible time for a long time and that fish became sick um, and stressed and I had to put it in, in the hospital tank and I managed to get it feeding again and I put it back in the main tank and it was just getting bullied just like crazy again I ended up having to take it out a second time just to try and I was trying to bulk it up and maybe it might stand its own ground but this fish was very reclusive like, like discus has their own personalities like and this fish just didn't have any aggression in it whatsoever so it's just like every single basically fish would pick on it every so often so it went on for a long time it was really stressing me out trying to get to integrate this fish and eventually i eventually i got it back in and the other, and the other fish did stop bothering it but at this point it'd been going on for a few months and that red marlboro ended up stunted so not only was it the weakest fish but it also wasn't going to grow anymore it was much smaller than all these other all the other discus in the tank and um, so it did like it didn't die right away it was stunted but it never really seemed to feed for a long time it used to just pick the only thing it would pick at is blood worms and um I'd say I had it for a good year of it looking like it was barely eating 
like it was active, it was swimming, like it wasn't just hiding in the corner the whole time, but there was always just something not right with it, and then one day I just came down and it was dead, so I'm not sure, I, don't, I think it just probably wasn't, it must have been a nutritional issue because it wasn't eating the proper food and only eating those worms, and, but yeah, that's, in hindsight, like, I should have took that fish back to the shop, um, but I was kind of eager and thought I, I could do it myself and integrate it myself and thought it happy ever after, but that's not good, that obviously wasn't the case. Um, the final fish that died that I had is actually a mystery death. It was a snow white discus, a lovely little discus I bought. A few discus from Seahorse Aquarium in Dublin and I got the size mixed up because they were talking in centimetres and I thought they were talking in inches. So I bought basically a fish that was going to be too small for this tank. But when I got him I put him in anyway and he didn't get any hassle of any of the bigger fish. He was the first to the tank to come and get the food, first to the glass whenever I stood in front of it to come and get the food. For a couple of days I was like oh great this, this is just working out, this fish has something about it like you know as I said they have their own personalities and um, but then I came down one morning he was dead on the ground so it's, I call it just a mystery death because he seemed absolutely fine and then it was dead so the only thing I can think of is maybe in the night or something one of the bigger fish um, whacked it or hit it or attacked it or something and just killed it instantly because it looked in really good health and for something to die so suddenly without any signs you'd, you'd wonder what it is I can just see the two over here actually are looking are thinking about laying some eggs it looks like okay now finally I'm just going to cover some positive stories of ones where I've saved because I know you might be watching this thinking how is this helping me but I suppose identifying the diseases um, Like it's only in the last six months or so that I've kind of come up with, or not come up with, but I've discovered a, a treatment that seems to work. Because in Ireland we don't have the same treatments in the States. And when I look, look online about how to treat this, there's all these drugs that I can't actually get for my fish unless I somehow find a vet that's willing to give me a prescription for them, which is which is where I'm from. You know, there's not very many fish vets like so. Um, you have to make do with what you got. So to start, to start off, um, I have a few stinker discus. One of them being two of them actually are pigeon blood. One is the guy over in the left, and the other is the very right of the screen as we speak. The other guy in the left is about is, is one of the pair over there looking kind of through the plant, and he's the one that was actually sick and. It was a stress induced sick, which like a lot of fish diseases come from anyway, and it was just down to harassment as well when he first entered the tank. Um, and he just stopped eating completely. And I was a, I didn't know what it was, I knew there was something wrong. So I I suppose I did take a risk, but then I looked it up online as well and I saw that it, it is doable. But I got two medic. I put him in the hospital tank, and I got two medications, and I'll show you them now. So this probably suits more of the Irish viewers. But uh, there's this antibacterial. It's just a kind of coverall antibacterial treatment. And um, you see, does it give any more information? Chloramine tea is the ingredient in it, if that helps anybody. And then the other one is this Warmer Plus, which I swear by. But um, I actually put them two of them in together into the hospital tank. And it saved that fish, saved that fish's life. Um, and now he's actually grown huge. He's actually outgrown the other pigeon, which is over here in the corner behind the red one now. But I thought, like, he was sick for almost a month, so I thought maybe he might become stunted. But when he came out, he, he grew really fast, and he's, 
he's doing really, really well. So that's one, that's one positive story. The second one is worms um, and my leopard discus there in the corner had this. That's a pair there in the corner as well, but they're kind of the picked on pair. Um, but he had worms recently and he's and you can tell if a fish has worms if they're losing weight but still eating and that's what's up with him and he's still kind of skinny but he is eating better now and his poo isn't long and kind of with worms the poo can be it's not like white and stringy like flagellates it's more like it's almost like clear I think it's it's the lining or something of, of the intestine, and that's what he, that's what he's pulling out. But then again, I use this same medication, but only this on this occasion, and he seems to be doing better. I know right now in this video he doesn't look like he's doing better, but he's not. He's hiding away in the corner like that. Um. So yeah, worms like there's but there's all the different types of worms. So there's no coverall, but like that worm that warmer plus medication is very good for treating worms. Um, if you're in the UK or Ireland or maybe other place in Europe and get it as well that's that's a great medication and then the final disease that I overcome or that my fish overcome was that red scarlet right in the front there she's kind of the dominant female of the tank I used to have these if you look back in other videos you've seen these um, bits of wood and they're kind of like the sticks were quite small and she caught herself on one of them pretty bad like she, she had a very sizable gash in the side of her and it was, it was infected as well so I treated her with methylene blue actually I ended up treating the whole tank of methylene blue because when I first saw the white the white spot on her I thought it was it was a form of white spot and um, so I treated the whole tank just because I didn't want any of the other discus to get it and that, that's actually what stress them out and end up getting worms in my in my leopards that was a mistake i just don't, don't have a, a hospital tank anymore so the leopard i mean sorry the red scarlet and um, came out came out well so the, so the red scarlet came out well out of that and you can't even see the, the injury on her anymore she really healed, healed up well so the methylene blue did prevent it was like a fungus and that's what that treats so and I had it there from when I was breeding so methylene blue on a on a kind of wound it worked wonders to be honest like it, but I wouldn't treat the whole tank because that really stressed out my fish and it ruined my plants as well or I know it's a fake plant but it kind of ruined the look of them um, yeah so that's my experience with diseases and discus and I hope I can help that helps some of you anyway if you've come across the same same issues. And if you've any questions or yeah or you think your fish have any of these diseases, drop me a comment and I'll see if I can help because I'm sure I've forgotten things because I just kind of blab on in these videos. And um, thanks for watching.